Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the CR10 large format 3D printer that costs under $500. Very excited to get my hands on this, get it set up and up and running and give you guys my initial feedback on the printer. So let me get going with the unboxing here. I originally heard of this printer from Preston over at Press Reset, who has done an unboxing of this and sort of shared his information on how he found this particular printer and with everybody and it absolutely blew up. And I was one of the people very interested in this printer as well. So I ordered this about a month ago. It took almost a month to order from gearbest.com. Uh, and get it shipped here. There was a huge back order, tons of people ordering it from, from his video. And since then, uh, Dustin over at Jetman uh, posted his unboxing and sort of impressions of this. So I figured I'd also do this as I now am the proud owner of this particular printer and cannot wait to get it unboxed here. So here is the frame. Let me put down my X-Acto knife, get everything out of here. So initially when you get it, so it's packaged very nicely, lots of nice foam uh, inserts here. So here is the bed frame. And by the way, this is the Simpletons unboxing and setup. I am no, nowhere near as knowledgeable or technical as those two fine gentlemen. So if you're looking for that, I'll include link information or links, I should say, to their videos up here and down in the uh, description down below where you can check those out. If you're looking for all the tech details. So it looks like there are some parts that are printed on this, which is very cool. Uh, very solid frame here as well. By the way, it comes with these little orange strips that you can very easily peel out. I am not a huge fan of the color scheme of this with the orange and black, so I might end up painting these and then reinstalling them. So let me get this out. Assuming this is parts and supplies. And then let me get the base out of here. It's actually pretty well packaged. I'm not surprised, but just uh, impressed with how well it's packaged and put together. So here's the top frame. As you can see, it's a really large printer here. Set this off to the side. And here's the control box. So what I'm really loving about this printer so far is that most of it is already assembled. Previously with a kit that I purchased, which is the BQ Hephaestos 2, it was an all day assembly process for me. It was the first time I had actually assembled a 3D printer and it took a very long time, it was very complex. This looks like it's gonna be much easier to get up and running. So here's the installation instructions. I'll actually scan this and include it in the video, maybe on this frame here so you can actually see it in detail. Uh, as well as a link down below. But very interesting one page document on how to assemble this. So we'll see how this all goes. Let me make sure to. So here's a look at everything that comes with the printer now that I've got it all unboxed. You have the frames, the power and control box, you have some tape, the power supply, you have filament holder, your actual filament, computer cables cleaning devices, zip ties, little snippers, tools, additional pieces for some of the extruder and mis miscellaneous connecting parts, pieces here for the, it looks like the different accesses, your USB card, a spatula, your filament tube, as well as a filament support, and your instruction information. So for the installation, you'll have these nuts that you have to install. And basically, if you lift the base frame up, you'll see the holes on the bottom that you slide them up through. And then the upper carriage piece is where that slides through the base here. You'll see the plates where those actually screw in from here. All right, next up on the installation, you have these little T bracket things here that you're gonna install on the side of the machine arms. Uh, one has the sensor indicator that you're going to put on the right side here where this should bump into this piece. The other does not have that sensor. And these appear to be very easy to install. Also make sure you've got all of the foam cleared out of any of the nooks and crannies in case it broke off 
of any of these. Also, one thing that I did as well is that I didn't capture on video is that I just went around and made sure that all of the little pre-existing bolts that were already in place were nice and tight before I get this thing up and running. The cables marked with E are for the extruder, which is the yellow portion here that you can plug into. Those are also connected to the X cables, the cables marked with X that are for the X axis. One goes into the front here and one to the back of the motor. You have your Z axis cables, which are gonna plug into the front bottom and uh, lower right bottom to the motor. And then the Y axis, it goes into the very back, the motor, and then the frame. It's alive! All right, everybody, so I've been playing with the CR-10 for, I don't know, a handful of days now, and so far, I'm really enjoying the printer. I've been troubleshooting a lot of different things. I haven't been getting the greatest of quality out of my prints using Simplify 3D initially, and that is initially, I should say. However, someone over on the CR-10 Facebook page, and again, I'll include links down below, uploaded their profile for Simplify 3D, which worked extremely well for them, and I've been using that, and so far it's coming out really well. I just recently did this Benchy, and it's really, really clean. No stringing, no zits or uh, bubbles or anything like that compared to some of these Doom masks that I went off and printed. Uh, so this blue one was the first Doom mask that I printed, and the stringing was really bad. There were lots of seam issues here where it just wasn't quite printing correctly, and then lots of zits and just little raised marks. So tons of cleanup. But I mean, uh, for not really having this calibrated and just running off and printing this, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it's not horrible. I would not be mad if I spent under 500 bucks and this was the kind of prints that I were getting out of it, knowing that I could actually refine the quality as I go. Then after adjusting some of the settings, I went and printed this again in black PLA, and the results were a good bit better. I was not getting the, the, the zits or marks or anything like that. I was still getting some of the seam issues as well as some of the stringing issues on the inside. But since then, I, I believe that I've corrected the settings for this printer for myself, or I should say I haven't corrected them, this fine user over on the Facebook page that provided their Simplify 3D profile, that's that's what I'm using now. And with the Benchy, it was looking really good. I was doing a low poly Darth Vader just before filming this, hoping that it would be ready for, for me to show you guys. But unfortunately, the print failed. Lo and behold, welcome to 3D printing. If you haven't 3D printed anything before, you are gonna have failures, not all the time, but they happen. And so, I mean, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the machine. The big thing for me was obviously the big build size compared to my other 3D printers, especially initially, what was it, two plus years ago, I started off with a MakerBot Mini. So to just give you some comparison, this was my original build size. The, the width is about four inches by four inches versus this is about 12 inches, almost 12 inches by 12 inches. Uh, and vertically, I don't even know off the top of my head. I think it's 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters. And this is like four by four by four. So really, I the, the from two years ago to now this, this was over $1,000 that was money I wish I could have saved uh, now compared to something like this, or even in terms of my BQ Whitbox or my Hephaestus 2, which have, I think, just about the same width, but the, the obviously it's not the same squared build volume. It's not the same build volume, and the problem with my, my BQ Whitbox and Hephaestus 2 was that I didn't have the upper limits that I needed to to print some of the masks without splitting them into multiple files. But now, because of this printer, because I can print files much taller than I could previously, I'm now not really finding myself running into issues if I wanna go run off and print a Judge Dredd mask, for, for instance. I can print the full thing in one piece on this printer. It might take two or three days to print, but it's all in one piece versus splitting it up into multiple smaller parts, which then in turn causes more time for cleanup and refining and post-processing once the print is finished. So at a high level, some of the things that I really like about this printer are one, obviously the build volume and size. 
Two, it has a heated bed. Uh, three, it's, you know, it's affordable and it's an all metal frame. It's not the acrylic frame or wood frame or anything like that. It has, you know, it seems to be very well built. I really have not had any issues whatsoever with the machine itself. It was very easy to assemble. And again, I'll have links down below to some documents that you can get that will make the actual build process much easier for you. Some of the things that I don't like are the separate box here, the control box. I'm not a big fan of this style of printers. Um, one, I, I really do not like the control mechanism here and the interface. I'm just not used to it. I feel like this is gonna take me forever to remember where all the options are. I'm constantly referring back to a user guide on things just compared to my other printers, which are just so much more user friendly in terms of their interface and getting up and running. I will say there is probably gonna be a little bit more tinkering that you have to do with this printer versus maybe some of the other machines, but in just in general with 3D printing, you're gonna be doing some tinkering with settings and add-ons and whatnot to get it to really fit your needs and to be printing really well. Uh, one of the other things that I really like about this printer right now is that there is a growing community and it's right now over on the Facebook page appears to be the number one spot for this. I think there's over a thousand people right now. People are regularly getting their machines, posting and sharing their settings and helping refine the prints that are coming out of this machine. My Witbox and my Hephaestos 2, there really is not a community for those printers. So if I have issues or I'm troubleshooting, there's like five to 20 people that I'm aware of that have those machines that I can reach out to for help or even that speak English, which is for me obviously slightly important. But uh, yeah, I mean, all in all, I would definitely recommend picking up the printer. If you're in the market for a machine and you're doing cosplay specifically, this is what this machine is gonna be build building for me. I'm gonna be building much larger props all in one piece, doing two day, three day prints and checking it out. So up next here, I'm gonna be planning on printing a full scale helmet and seeing how that turns out with the updated settings that I have now in hand. I just need to make sure I have a new spool of PLA <laughs> to run off and print with. And also the other cool thing with this is now I can not only print with PLA, I can print with some other options like ABS, which I was not able to print with previously because my other printers do not have a heated bed. So no more tape for me. I'm just using hairspray on this printer, which is pretty dang nice. I have to tell you that as well. So yeah, all in all, not bad. So thanks again for watching you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully I didn't bore you guys to death with this. I don't normally do sort of these unboxings and first impressions. I don't wanna necessarily call this a full review just because I really haven't had a chance to really use it for a while now. So uh, yeah, I'll include some links down below to if you're interested in picking this up, where you can grab it. Uh, I wouldn't actually recommend getting it from Gearbest. There have been a lot of issues recently with people trying to get their orders placed and shipped out to them properly and in a timely manner. There are some other options that'll include some links down below to where you can get those. You might have to pay a little bit more for that, but again, it should be right around 500 or a little over 500. And for the size of this printer and the volume, you know, you, I, I don't know of a better deal that's out there, to be honest. And the quality of the prints are honestly pretty, pretty good. Also, just want to mention, make sure to check out Preston's channel, Press Reset, and Jatman's channel. I'll include links at the end of this video here to where you can check out their channels and their videos specifically to this printer if you're interested in more of the technical details around the machines. Hey, thanks again for watching, you guys. And I will talk with you later. Looking forward to printing some big stuff here.